That's a tuna bar. My balls is totally moving, doing improving. Not that we get back up. Oh, I'm not hard in desire. My balls are on fire. Gonna take us to the top. Welcome to my show. Did you know that your mom is Oh, mate, welcome to the show. Whew. All right, so a lot's happened since last week. I don't know if you caught it, but I'm a stuntman and I am uh, the only person to ever electrocute a doctor on, on film. You're the world's leading podcast electrocutioner. Right, that's the label, that, that's the victory that we have right now. And then you wouldn't believe it, but there's going to be huge, giant guests on today's show and the Pope. That's exciting. Wow. Yeah. T typically, he would qualify as a gigantic get all by himself. No, not when, not when, you, <laughs> not when you're potentially getting pink. That's right, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Pink on the Jason Ellis Show podcast in just a few seconds. Uh, very excited to talk to her and a little bit nervous because not really that worthy. It's, she's a very busy lady who probably doesn't go, yeah, man, I'll go in your shitty ass podcast but she's gonna be here oh no water over. there's some reason to suspect that this may be among the first time she's ever zoomed right you think oh yeah no no she, she could have been fucking with me but it did sound like she didn't know a lot about zoom right when you told her we were gonna zoom she's like okay i'll have somebody figure out the zoom thing and yeah she said how does that go so that meant like maybe she didn't know how it goes right Never done it before. Some lady was on BBC Wales and they were talking to her about how she like lost her job because of uh, coronavirus. And she's yeah. like, yeah, it's been pretty tough out here. And she had her bookcase behind her. Big fat dildo on it. BBC News. You know, uh, a friend of mine <laughs> yeah. from Dark Alliance showed me, I forgot to tell you guys, exciting new potential stunt. He has a friend that has a gun that shoots dildos. Oh, really? Yeah, like real hard out at you. And he said, like, you'll be all right. Get a bit of a bruise or whatever. But Must be a big gun. It's like it looks like a assault rifle of sorts, mm -hmm. and it when you shoot it, it bangs like a proper gun. Yeah. So looks like somebody. It looks crazy that you would stand in front of a gun and be shot like that. <laughs> you did it. You're on. I can I hear you. In 1986. I this know. We would just say welcome to the show. Uh, is Pink uh, Alicia Moore? What 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 am I supposed to say? What is Whatever. what do you what <laughs> I knew you were gonna try and do you really do you feel like the the pink thing like do you like to still go by that but uh or it's funny like people that used to know me in Philly they they can't not call me pink the Alicia makes zero sense to them but and then some people on the road kind of call me pink but I don't know I'll answer to anything but it doesn't yeah food you can you can call me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, so what's been happening now that you can't uh, go on the road and do stuff? I know that uh, you and Carrie have got like a, a winery thing going on. Is that like officially out or what do you do? Yeah, you yeah got I it, make right? wine and I raise crazy people. And yeah. I've been doing, I've been working, I taught myself GarageBand. <laughs> Wait, the music recording software. Oh, Thank you, Michael, for explaining what that was about to be. As you're going to find out later on in the show, Alicia, when I sing your song, not the most musically gifted. And also I want to bring up, I know that you mentioned that I didn't sing at your wedding, and I never forgot that because I thought for sure you would not have fucking realized that I didn't sing at your wedding. What, what are you looking at me for? You just got married to him. And when he sang, I was like, oh, my God, note to self, don't fucking sing, Jason. It Because Carrie's like I am. He's already good at something, and now he's doing something that he's very bad at in front of people, and it's not a good look. I, I like that's being... One, that's the best look, when you put yourself out there for the loves in your life. Well. That's a good point. That's why I you thought about this. I, in your life. Look, I, <laughs> you've done... 
there was I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it because I didn't realize it until this time where I you know the the Sirius XM show and then me jumping into podcasting and me panicking and being super stressed about my job existing ever again and I thought like uh, I would never ask Alicia for any more stuff because I feel like it's that's like what happens when you hang out with Jason is hey when are you gonna throw me a bone but you've always like the TV show I know that Steve Asifin did not convince you to help me with my TV pilot. You did it because you were like, yeah, he's cool. I'll fucking show up. What TV pilot is this? This is a long it time was, ago. It was My Job Sucks yeah, with Jason Ellis. so much fun. The reason why I want to do things with you is because you're rad. We did have a good time. You dyed my also, hair I pink. I want to prove my skateboarding skills. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because I don't know if I've said it to your face, but that day when we went to that skate park, uh, you took a fucking slam where it was so hard that I didn't know you well enough. So when you slammed, I I, I pretended that I didn't see it. <laughs> and, I, and I looked up because I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. If you had gone, like you did a rock to fake and you locked up and you went go, go, on the battery pack too. But it was on your hip and, and you had like a fucking boob tube on as well. I'm like, got no pads, just some like fucking tank top thing. Just whoa, go. And I'm like, oh God. I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not here. And then I look up and you skated away. And I was like, oh my God, this chick is so fucking hard. And then I thought, Carrie, you really got yourself a good one. Like that was the thing Aww. that I, Aww. I'm so, I'm so pathetic. When like, I, went to, I went to Woodward skate camp as a kid and I would enter every contest and I would suck so hard. And the only contest <laughs> I ever won was best hipper. <laughs> what? Cause that is out of, and I I'm I've been in it my whole life, and out of all the hippers that I've seen, that is a top three hipper. Like I I was actually talking to Tony Hawk this morning about that rock to fakey that I witnessed, and we both belly laughed very hard about oh, about so much. you eating Were you shit. See mobile party where there was a gap in the half pipe, and I kept. I was so drunk that I kept thinking I could get past it. And I face planted no less than 15 times in front of everyone. I'm rad. And what's your deal with skateboarding with no shoes on? I noticed that there's more than one picture of that, and I believe I've actually been witness to that too. You like you skate mini mans with no pads? No. You can feel the grip tape beneath your feet. Yeah. You should try that sometime, Jason. Oh, no, no. Thank you, Michael, for recommending me <laughs> attempting to skateboard with no shoes on. I've never thought of that. But I also, believe it or not, have attempted that. Do you know when falling off with no shoes on, that is so fucking bad. There's no traction. Like, it's just masonite burn on all of your feet. Well, that's all right. So now that you don't tour, and I know, look, you're a super mom. You've always been a real person. And when it comes to... You some- that, kids? I'm a super mom. Do you hear this? <laughs> Good to know they're in the room. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you should have told me that just a little earlier. <laughs> Glad I caught myself. I haven't gotten anything too gnarly. Okay, good. So, there yeah. That's half the question. Really good, mummy. <laughs> Always with the smart things. And daddy's great too. Don't get it twisted. Both mummy and daddy, very excellent at their jobs. Hard to pick a favorite. Right. No. If I had to pick one, I wouldn't do it. But wait a minute. I'm on camera. Yeah, I would say that mummy's obviously holding it down. You know what? He's a. You guys are um, amazing people. And for someone that, because uh, I tell people sometimes, I get, there's two versions for you where I feel like when I talk to you, it's just, um, you're just some, you remind me of just some skate dude. Like we just talk about whatever and it's like, yeah. fuck you, yeah. fuck you too. No weird, kids, real kids thing. I'm not trying to call her a dude either. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you all, but it, for someone, cause you know, all the other celebrities in the world and I've met them and they don't, it seems, it must be so hard for them to be mummy when they're so not, cause you're, you're not a big, it's not a big, adjustment you when you're talking to your kids and you when you're not it's the same person i'm you're doing it right now for christ's sakes <laughs> it's you're not a two, it, when i don't think that that's the same for a lot of people of your caliber and i forget your caliber and i think you don't know it well who cares See? can you imagine how much work <laughs> it takes to be two people it must be exhausting yeah no I mean, I'm, a- I'm a different person on stage if you put a microphone in my hand and you throw my ass into a leotard, I will own that shit. I will. When I'm off stage, I'm just goofy and awkward, but I'm still the same person. I don't, I don't know how people do that. I don't know how to be a celebrity. How do you do that? See, that must be, 
that must be the key to it because a lot of people would uh they get they'll get paid to show you how to be a celebrity and and i feel like it's a it's a it's a guaranteed bummer because in the end you will be you there's you can only be this other person for so long as a guy that's you know tried to do other things i'm like you know what here it's un- it's probably going to be unfortunate to a lot of this the people in this country but eh, here i am um, and ever since I did that, I have felt way better about myself. So but that's very Australian. That's why I'm kind of Australian because it's very Australian. It makes sense. That does make sense. Even though some people that you're friends with don't really like Australians as much as I would like them to like me. <laughs> they made me very angry. Yeah, I remember the first time I, I did a show in Australia. You know, you kind of want when you're new, I was like 20 and you, you want people to be like, oh, my God, you're amazing. And the girl in the front row in Australia was like, I can't, can you tell him to turn your microphone up? I can't hear you. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 hold on. Turn my microphone up. And I was like, I love this place. <laughs> you could hear him say it. That's pretty awesome. Speaking of Australians, the first time you were on the Jason Ellis show way back when in our really old studio, the first time you Swing punched house. Jason on camera, I think you were with an Australian. You you came and visited us with a, uh, with yeah. a, with a witch. Makala. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm not get, yeah, we gotta watch the rest of that story. But you punched me a lot. You didn't you got like kind of hopped up on it. I don't remember it. punching you. I remember you punching me. Okay. I'm not gonna tell you why I think you don't remember punching me. <laughs> because it started to get a little it started to get out of hand. I was I had to go and you were like, no, you were standing over me trying to punch me in the face more before I ended my four hour show. We were already on for four hours. And somehow you were like, nah, I haven't landed. Wait a minute. Just hold your head. And I'm like, man, stop can doing I, this. Can I me. share the photo that sort of demonstrates what happened? Yeah. I'm, Is there yeah. an easy way for us to? Oh, you've oh got... I see it. Jason's I making it. a Popeye face in reaction to what just happened to him. Yeah, because she kept doing it. it was, she didn't. She... It's because you punched me in the stomach hard. Okay. So you're blacking, <laughs> you're, you're blacking out, Alicia. You, I punched you in the stomach. After you punched me in the face. I don't remember it that way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, okay, so you, I remember you really not wanting to, to, to punch me in the face. And then, wait, 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 wait you're not going to call it off camera cord. Well, I, did, I, I can't punch people unless I'm really mad. Yeah, or, okay, uh, maybe it was my reaction, but it seemed like once you landed a couple, then you were like, okay, no, 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 I changed my mind. I really want to punch you in the face. And then you got into it. And then in New York... Another thing. So we're up to three right now. I'm 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 punk I'm punching Pink in the face. I'm sorry. Pink is punching me in the face on the Swing House radio show where nobody is listening. Nobody's booking Pink on the whole channel. And Dickhead over here is getting punched in the face for four hours with her while she's buzzed with some Australian witch lady. <laughs> it, that, it, I don't even think that the video like because it was a different time where like if you did it now, I reckon it would be a like whoa. Pink punched some d- dumbass in the head. Back then, it wasn't like cool enough to, to, to get a reaction. So you did that. You did the t- you did the TV thing. Then you come to New York. What are we gonna do now? Cause it's gotta escalate. Gotta do something. And I go punch you in the stomach. And you go, yeah, good. And I think, okay, I this is how strong you are. <laughs> You're so lame. I punched you, and you said, really? I'll never forget it. Cause I was trying to be. Yeah, but Give, I think you broke a rib. You hit me so hard. Because the second one, because I'm look, you're like kind of a you kind of she kind of big sistered me. Like it was a yeah. she went really, and I was I like, know. oh well, then the next one has to be at least forty percent harder. Or you were trying to be a gentleman, I'm, lady puncher. I'm gonna get belittled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I did. That was a proper punch to your stomach. Once again, video of it that didn't. No one care. Like your show, insignificant. Some dumbass with an accent. Punching pink. Probably a good thing that that one didn't go viral. Why? Out of, oh, out of context. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, taken out of context Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, good point. Jason Ellis beats up pink. <laughs> I mean, at this point for the podcast, Although people will probably be like, "Nah, all right, that's cool." <laughs> I was gonna say, like, what did what did she say first? Maybe maybe <laughs> you came at me. You know, you're very aggressive sometimes. Can you tell uh, that Jason Ellis is a good friend of your papa's? Because <laughs> it's so no one talks like that to mummy. See, now I'm getting weird about it. I'm worried about it. Well, you look, that's how he talks to me. I was, 
I feel like I've never said anything nice to Carrie. Ever. It wouldn't, it, it doesn't, he, he only says bad things to me. Like I never, hey, dickhead, what's going on? Loser, what's up? Fuck Todd, moron. You know, and I'm like, good, good uh, brother. You know, <laughs> I, whoa. I got mate. I usually call people mate and I call girls friend. And just like giant moron asshole is, I'm like, ah. And I know what he means because he loves me. And he's like, I love you. That's, how, but, that's his love language. Yeah, but it's moron, which means I really <laughs> like you. Like a little too much, you fucking moron because it softens Carrie, the blow. Carrie's not very comfortable with feelings. <laughs> well, it's when you have, yeah, no. I can, I'm the same. I'm the same way. That's very, very difficult to to do that. But I feel like uh, That's I've got a show, so it's so easier. Open. Well, now I am because it's the, so open. It's my job. Yeah, but I feel like you've always been a little, a little like kind of teddy bear waiting to talk about your feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I just think the show brought. I think the show brought it. Well, that's why that's yeah. why I'm good at it too because that's what I do. I th- I literally just write songs about my feelings and then I go on stage and sing about them. And everybody so, relates to you that has been through something similar, just like what I do here. I don't know how that's the that goes back to the whole celebrity thing. Like I don't know how to talk about the weather. I don't know. I don't know how to bullshit. I don't know how to have dumb surface conversations. I hate them. Starting with their dumb surface conversations is definitely going to make it more difficult to get involved in the conversation. I could see how that would work. But this thing has been really nervous. I've been working on this, Alicia, because you came on the show and I was nervous to even ask. And if you were like, of course I'll come on. And then I thought, never forgot when she said that didn't sing and I'm like man I was so sober and you guys were all buzzed and you obviously weren't mommy because you don't do that but uh everybody else was really buzzed and I was not and it was like when are you gonna sing I'm like I am not gonna get up there in front of like everybody that there is there is a musical person all your friends are musical people and then there's like three dickhead moto dudes and big b wait that's one of them but it's just, you know, and I'm like, I, I only know Metallica songs and I am not doing a nine minute song where I d- badly, I, you know, I'll do a two Murph, minute song. Didn't Murph do Skid Row? Uh, yes. And he went, see, see that one pulled me, he fucking hit the high note. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not coming up there to do that when he was, for, he looked like the guy that was for sure going to do. That's how you just rap. Like when I do karaoke, I don't sing because that would be lame because I'm, that's boring. So I rap. Mm-hmm. Young MC is my karaoke song. Well, I'll Are never you forget. Make it up to me today? Are you gonna sing for me? I'm gonna do it right now. As a matter of fact, <sighs> this is gonna be a great song that I wrote just for you. All right? Are you ready for this? Oh, you wrote it? Yeah, I fucking wrote it. Oh, okay. Jason's been hyperventilating yeah. for 45 minutes. You're not the only one who's won <laughs> Garage Band in the last five months. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I don't know how to make it play. Hang on. Oh, man, I'm shaking. This is so great. I believe in you. Hang on a minute. I, gotta, I don't feel... Shake it out. Shake it out. Are you sweating? <laughs> oh, now he's getting naked. <laughs> Wait, I need a picture of this. Don't tell Carrie, all right? <laughs> you know what Carrie would say? Nothing. The like, cool. Are you ready? Oh, there's a mic, too. This is the best. I'm ready. Here we go. Dear Pink, we're friends for a long time. Punch me in the face. You're the girl I can count on between you and Carrie. You've helped my career so. Alicia Moore, you are my fucking hero. I seen you skating, and I gotta say that you slammed so hard that I nearly looked away. You're doing your part to help the people out there, but when it comes to skating, well, you're pretty bad. Who slams on a rock to break it? Dear Pink, your friend. For a long time, punch me in the face. You're the girl I can count on between you and Carrie. You helped my career so, Alicia Moore. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, I broke my microphone. That made me want to cry. No one's ever written me a song before. Okay, you tell Carrie to start <laughs> notepadding, motherfucker, because it's on. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, but you can sing. Yeah. Yes. Look at that. Quote it. Get it. Get the bite, the thing. Make him say it. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. Take that, Murph. You didn't see that coming, did you, Alicia? That whole time. And the vocal effect, too. Yeah, that's mine. I made that up. And I did that all that all by myself. Sang in the car, sang in the shower. My wife, I think my wife only hears in her head, dear Pink, because I have been, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it work. There was even like a nice line in there. There was a- <laughs> one or two, yeah. Yeah, no. Nah, but still weaved in the bashing. See, yeah. still the old shit sandwich. Shout out to Carrie Hart. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Got to get a little bashing yeah, in there. The thing I've never forgiven you for is when we threw that part when we when I threw that roast for Carrie Hart, and I hired uh, Dane Cook to <laughs> uh, roast him, and all his friends got up and roasted Carrie, and then you got up and decided that it was actually an Alicia roast, and you spent thirty minutes going in on me. <laughs> Look, I am not a professional comedian, and yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You hired somebody wants to know who this voice is coming from. Hey, buddy. Hi, Jamo. How's it going, mate? I'm your dad's mate. Believe Hi, it or not. Hi. Hi, Jason. I seen you riding <laughs> moto the other day, mate. You're looking pretty good on the track. Yeah. Yeah. Are you fast? I'm fast. Yeah, you are <laughs> very fast. You look good out there too. All the gear. Nice bike, man. You're looking good. A motorcycle and a bicycle, but the motorcycle goes a little bit faster. Yeah, it's all up to you. It's all in the wrist. Who's faster, you or your mom? Oh, look, somebody else punched me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> To get an answer in a minute. What's that? Oh. Wait, I'm intimidated. Oh man, that's I. It's just he's scaring me. It's <laughs> scary. Some solid smack talk. Yeah, right. I'm like, man, I'm out. You win. <laughs> he just started saying that the other day. I don't know where he got it. I oh, it's like a, a TV something. Something I'm got Jenny? him. Oh. You can get it you don't, don't even look like a Jenny. No. No, I don't see that either. So how long, how much are you into wine and how much is like some other thing? Like, do you really like it? Are you passionate about it? Did you? Are you like working on prototypes? Do you do that? Have I'm you stumped the grapes? The you what? I, I too much into wine. I have had two dreams in my life, and that was to sing and to make wine. And now I can do both. Wait, you want to? How how old were you when you wanted to make wine? Not until like my twenties, but I've been doing this other thing since I was born. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I caught but that. Part. I would go on tour, like for instance, Australia, and we'd go to Hunter Valley and McLaren Vale, and. Uh, on days off, I would go, you know, we would go to Penfolds or somewhere cool and it's beautiful and everyone's really nice. And <clears throat> I like the moon. I like the weather. I like, I like to drink wine. <laughs> you are kind of a, and Australia loves you. Like when I go back to Australia, it's always the, the, my, the crown achievement of my life is that I have met you. <laughs> that's, that's, no one asked me about skateboarding or anything. It's like, what's she like? <laughs> How's that? I'm like, I don't know. It's just like person. Yeah. But if I, yeah, I've only, this one right now, I just realized because it's a podcast, it's not under the radio hidden thing. This goes out to Australia. So, mom, it's me and Pink. Mom, look at that. Hey, look <laughs> at me. Mom. Top of the world. <laughs> I made it, mom. Yeah. Pink, have you done any of the, uh, the own, your, your own grape stomping? Yes. I do it all all of it. Um, 
I prune the vines. I grow the vines. I live <laughs> in amongst the vines. <laughs> and you've never wiped and out like that lady? Wine. I, I knew that question was coming. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever crushed the grapes in a bucket and then fallen out of the bucket off a stage? And gone, and oh, 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 oh. <laughs> No, I've seen that video. It's, it's, it's all Kevin thinks about when you mention wine is that lady. I knew it. It was just you had to get it in there. It's been my ringtone for 20 years. Look, it's very, very funny. I yeah. get it. Very funny. Yeah, so, no, I love it. It's, I mean, shit. It's nice right now, especially during a pandemic, to be in nature. And we're very, very lucky. I said a bad word. But look how good. You said I'm super mom. Look. It's noon. My child is still in pajamas eating Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> so awesome. I'm so going to copy that tomorrow. Selling them. I wanna... She is Girl Scout. She is selling Girl Scout cookies. By the way, right. since both of you are here, I absolutely adored, my entire family adored the performance you did on that Disney Christmas sing-along special. It was oh, the, the highlight you. of the whole thing. It was wonderful. So unexpected. Where did that you... come from? Where did that come from? How did you become so good at singing? <laughs> 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 oh man that's what you get I, I said to her I was like you're really good you should take lessons she goes but I'm already good I was like uh, but you can always be better she's like I don't want to be famous that's dumb I'm like I never did great that. You, did say that. you told me you wanted to be a ski instructor in Mammoth oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, you should oh. totally do that that's a sick job yeah. I would totally be a ski instructor in Mammoth if I could do it again but like a famous one <laughs> 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 that everybody recognizes from my insane ski jumps that I do. Oh my god! Why are you up here? Shouldn't you be in school? No. <laughs> you have school. Go to school. Go I have three. Minutes. Learn something. Yeah. So where's where's your husband? He's in his shop building a a, 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 a motor. Can you get down? He's in his shop building a motorcycle. I kind of don't mind if this. I'm not allowed life. to beat you in public, so I need you to beat me. <laughs> there it is. There's the exclusive. <laughs> not right now, but sometimes, guys. There it is. That's how they get in line. Uh, He's building a motorcycle. He has a shop, and he just stays there. He does, huh? So him and Big B just hang out in there all they day, just, making fun with each other. All day. All is day. it? Is it weird to you? Because I their love is 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 very passionate. Uh, I'm so glad he has that in his life. Yeah, that's what it is, huh? You're like, at least, because he has him at all times to confide in and, and to fart with and, and to <laughs> prank. It's just, that's his boy. I'm sure they have their own separate love language. <laughs> they do, for I sure. I think they have the same love language. I think they both just shit talk each other all day. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that is... There was a time there where I didn't know that. I think it was like the big day out tours where I was originally friends with him. And I thought maybe he didn't like me because it, it just always, it was just always, what the fuck's up with that T-shirt? Oh, I mean, what's up with that shirt? Man. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me, let me. Yeah, go to school. Go to school. No, I know. Yeah, because we need to be able to talk freely and be ourselves. We need to be our authentic <laughs> selves. <laughs> yes. I'm going to do that next time. <laughs> My son's around. I need to be authentic right now. Yeah. So you're going to have to like move out of the room. Daddy's dad, going to do Your dad needs to take his shirt off and speak for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I know. You literally couldn't be louder. <laughs> I see. This is a real, this is a, you'd be surprised how many people don't even hang around with the kids. This is oh, a I real know. mom here. This is the I, proper thing yeah. here. <laughs> I'm a, we're a little dysfunctional the other way. We're very codependent, but I'm okay with it. I don't know what I'm going to do when they don't want to hang out with me anymore. I yeah. might just come do your show with you. <laughs> yes, finally, they'll get some fucking people to watch it. That is the key right there. If you want to start doing like the weather once a week on here, you're more than welcome. If I just go and it's pink with the weather and you'd be like, it's fucking cold. Click. That's it. Still, I got a I got pink on the weather, and the show is huge. Everyone's talking about it. I can sing you an intro every time. You're doing just fine. I think we're gonna be okay. I believe that we'll be okay. I believe. You got to do that, you know. Do you still plan on making more albums and hits and going on tour, or are you just gonna make yeah. one? No, I I need both. I I can't survive without 
my without music. I forgot too. Lately, I've been forgetting. Like I call it your spiritual toolbox. Like whatever you have that you know makes you feel better, that you know makes you feel good. Like for you, it's probably boxing and exercise or, yeah. or whatever else that is. I put on Otis Redding the other day and I just started crying because I forgot. I forgot that music can do that, that it can just instantly heal your soul. <laughs> Well, it's the passion. Like, that's how you got so good at it. You're so passionate about music. It's sort of, you know, like, you know, the same, you're the same with your husband. There's, there's dirt bike stuff that is and monotonous. He still loves it. Right. It's never, you still it never. find joy in skateboarding? Yeah. I, I mean, there was a time when I first moved up here to do radio where the only way I could get, it was like a girlfriend breakup. And when I break up with girls, I tend to, uh, not want to be their friend after it because there was something that happened that you hurt me. So mm -hmm. skateboarding and leaving it and becoming a radio guy, I've really detached myself from skateboarding until the, the pain of not being with the boys anymore subsided. And then I started to be okay. And, and I follow way more people on social media that skateboard yeah. now. And like Tony sent me a video today of, I was still in a demo in, in 2000 in England or whatever. So I still, I follow guys and go, oh my God, I can't believe that guy can do that now. So I still get pumped on it. But yeah. there was a period. Where, I mean, I can never stop. I'm always a skateboarder. It's fun. I'm not, I'm a radio guy, but I am a, I'm a skateboarder. Really? That's what I really am. It doesn't yeah. leave ever. Yeah, that's how I am. I, I've been, I taught myself at 40 years old to, to do garage band. And I'm really, really proud of myself. <laughs> I, you did say to me, how does Zoom work in one of the text messages? And I thought, is she fucking with me? Or like, I, I didn't want to answer it in a way where I thought maybe I misunderstood the question. I'm like, wait, you're not asking me how Zoom actually works, are you? Because well, I, I know how to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. Yeah. We have a no, lot of guests and listeners who can't. I was going to say, this is probably the smoothest transition <laughs> of Zoom I've ever had. So, yeah, you're on fire. No, I'm going to be in a tutu touring until I'm, I mean, until I can't. But I saw Tina Turner at 69 in Christian Louboutins in heels running around an arena. And God, she's so magical. Why not? Right? Like, why not? Why not? Why? Yeah, why unless not? you sound like. Stuffing my fat ass into a leotard for the rest of my life. So on your own on that one. You got to, you, if, why would you not if you don't, if you still have your talent? Like, that's insane to not go do that all the time i think it's the greatest thing ever is skateboarding you can't skateboard when you're 70 like tony hawk's doing really good but maybe you can what le but what level like you i feel like do you get satisfaction out of singing something difficult or does that not really matter to you yeah but i don't i mean for my show i don't know how I'm, i don't know what that's gonna look like at 70 but we'll see but you have that you you're not a I mean you are a pop star but you're a real singer and you have soul so you can you can slip over to what I call real music and 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 I mean you're already doing it you have albums where you're it's not a pop song it's just a really good song yeah. with a lot of passion in it that's the thing that sort of splits you apart that and you're actually singing when you're live that shit too and I'm flying upside down what is that like I know that you what what did you say i'm gonna do sw uh, swinging on these things in a demo or in the my performance or did you do swinging on those things class and then go man i'm no. so good at that i should tie it into the show my first dream was to be an olympic gymnast so that's all i did as a kid is that why you were at woodward yeah the first year i went to woodward i went for gymnastics and then i saw all the boys and i was like i'm going for skateboarding wait you went for gymnastics and then you saw the dudes and changed it to i'm a skateboarder you yeah. are you kids in the room fell in love with tess pappas absolutely ew you did <laughs> that is crushing how the hell that guy is hideous you fucking <laughs> muppet shit <laughs> the hell's going on there? How come you're not into me? I was way better looking than him. Fuck, he was a bit better than me, but whatever. Man, I remember Total when she, package. Dude, when she showed up at X Games, it was she was like the she was like the the golden ticket of uh, of getting out of uh, action sports and becoming glorious. Like all these, when she showed up for Carrie, it was a it was so everybody everybody that was somewhat attractive in action sports was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, hello, hello, Elite. And I'm like, oh, everybody's, everybody thinks they've got a chance because everyone knows if you date Pig and you're at X Games. And I was like, man, the, 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 the aura she had walking through. And it's like, no, man, she's here with Gary. And then it's like, whoa, you're a heavy hitter at the start. We had a crush on Carrie Hart. Oh, so in love. It made sense. He was always like, Good looking, you know, even like on a bad I day. To, I used to smoke cigarettes and I wait. I saw him at, I forget what it's called, the one in Vegas in October, some moto mm-hmm. event. But um, I took a picture with him. I made him come over and take a picture with me. And then I went home and cut everybody else out of the picture and pasted us together in my cigarette case. <laughs> but you're, you are so passionate. That is such a, to, so, to already, to, well, when, when it works out, there's another word for that when it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> like if he, hadn't, if he hadn't been interested, you're just a stalker. Man, this pop chick is out of her mind. Follow me everywhere. Cutting out photos. Yeah, I guess that did turn out good for you. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that could have gone bad. Um, no, it's been it's been a wild ride. Yeah, but you, he is a wild guy from a wild scene, but he's the... You don't know until you get older. You know, you can make your, you can assume, you know, this guy's going to grow up. He'll be fine. Or this guy's definitely going to have a shaky uh, life. He was, you don't, he's a rock guy. All chicks like him. And he's in a sport where you're supposed to be completely fearless. And he's at the top of the food chain of, I don't care what happens to me. And you think there's only a certain person that's going to be into that guy. And you think that that guy is only going to be about a certain thing. But he, out of all those traits where he has too many tattoos and, and yeah, sometimes he does tricks where probably going to uh, die. And he's like, yeah, but I could probably make it. Those people usually have like a bunch of problems when they get off the bike. But he's always been a grounded, normal, like right. considerate. Even back when I was just like, blah, cocaine. He would try to, <laughs> he would have rational conversations with an absolute moron and try you know and be like hey man like you're gonna be good like we can do this like hot and huntington sponsored me when i was still a skateboarder doing tony hawk's radio show and then i show up at his tattoo shop and put cigarettes out on my hand and make chuck liddell punch me in the face and he's like you know you're all right chase and oh that's right he made me he sent me back to my room because uh some girl was punching me in the dick to and i said because she couldn't spill my beer (laughs) And then apparently I dropped my glass out of my hand and it smashed at my feet and I still had my hand in the position that I was holding the glass. And then Carrie said, maybe maybe it's time for you to head up to your room, champ. And I didn't even know where I was. He took me to the room. And then when I woke up, I don't know if I've told you this, but the girl that was kicking me in the nuts, I was doing this thing where I had baggy pants and I would widen my knees so the crutch would block a lot of the kick. But her toe, she had like uh, pointed shoes on. It was going up my ass. And I was drunk and didn't really think about it. So when I woke up in the middle of the night, I had, well, I covered it. I had backflip bitch tattooed in my armpit. And I, all I saw was bitch. And my arm was super welled up from Chuck Liddell punching me. And my anus hole was sore. And I thought, oh, you did it, dude. You finally did it. <laughs> like you fucking talk shit. And people beat you up and raped you. And I called oh Carrie and told him my told him my 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 worries. And he just laughed at me and said, No, dude, you got kicked in the nuts like 40 times by some chick. Like, relax. Oh, but, but, but what about the anus? <laughs> but I did tattoo you. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did tell yeah. He said, no, there was I called him backflip bitch. And he said, if you call me that again, I'm tattooing it on you. And I said, Yeah, backflip bitch. Did he tattoo you? Yeah. He's done the two tattoos. I don't know about now because I, I think he tattooed you, but his two first tattoos are on yours truly. I still have the shrimp on the Barbie. Probably one of my favorite tattoos. I tattooed his whole ass. The social distortion logo, right? Yeah. His whole ass. Well, half of it. Right. Half a cheek. So two hours? I don't remember. I can only, I'm only a good tattoo artist when I'm drinking. That is so stupid. That's not real at all. That's such a bad 
never. You know, that's the thing. If you ca- if you get a lot of tattoos, then you can get shit tattoos. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're Justin Bieber and you've got a couple of cutesies on there, you don't want to get a shrimp on the Barbie. But when you've already had like several, because that's a different. I think people now get tattoos where their pe- tattooists are more welcoming. They used to be way more like um, yeah. mean angry people and if you didn't have a lot of tattoos that means that you for sure sucked and they were going to try and fuck you over as best as they could so your first five tattoos are who the fuck did that and i'm like uh hanky panky and they're like well that guy's legendary how come it's so shit <laughs> i'm like probably because he hated me because i'd never had a tattoo <laughs> fuck me you know that's the game right I've ha- i hate now that there's guys that are you know they have tattoos where i'm like man that looks like real life coming out of your arm and you he, paid for that and he did a good job? <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble, right? This is the big, you know, Chris Cole, right? From skateboarding, obviously. Yeah. So Chris Cole is a friend of mine now. And we we're talking at a party about tattoos. And Chris Cole explains to me that he was getting a chess piece. And before the chess piece, he went to a place where they numb it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, man, you can't tell me. I'm your friend, but you can't tell me that and think I'm not going to bust like your... numb it before you get lasered? Yeah, he yeah, got numbing stuff in his chest before he got the tattoo, but I guess the numbing thing, something went wrong and he had to, he had to get... Like, he, he passed out from that. So he has, like, this crazy story about getting a chest, chest tattoo oh. in, the, in the most pussy oh. way possible and still ended up paying a hefty price. A lot, now they have all the creams. Now when I get tattoos... Guys, do the they go? You got to put the spray on, and and it there's no pain, and I don't really like that. No, I'm not doing that. Are you getting I tattooed get anymore? My, I went to get my tongue pierced when I was 12 with my brother. Oh my who was god, 14. your poor parents. That's so bad, man. I swear, if my daughter. Oh, anyway, go ahead. And my brother was he, he lost a bet, so he had to go first. And <laughs> wait, how did it go? Oh. He stepped up to get his tongue pierced. They pulled out his tongue and he passed out and fell through a glass table. Oh, oh my what did, God. What did the glass table do to him? Oh Man, you're, la- you're laughing way too much for this story. <laughs> so, he wasn't know. allowed to get his tongue pierced anymore from that studio, so I went. So it ended up just being me with the pierced tongue. But I, I remember him passing out and I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. Yeah, I like it when people pass out from tattoos and and, and piercings. It's definitely funny because you gotta. <laughs> it's sort of like um, anybody that uh, plays in the pain game and acts pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole. It's not the whole reason, mm-hmm. but if you don't get thrilled about that when you're in the pain game and you do great at it, yeah, you're not. What the hell are you in it for? You got to yeah. make fun of all the people that faint when they get hurt. That's like ah ha ha because I'm so much more. In pain than you, and I've like had conversations with people. What the fuck happened to you? Those ones feel good. Do you see? Do you know who Tom Segura is? Nope. He's this comedian guy, and he's like forty-four or something. He's a little out of shape, not hugely out of shape, but he tried to dunk a basketball the other day, and his leg exploded as he went to take off. His leg popped, and then when he oh. he fell on his back and put his arm around his the back of him when he landed, and it was kind of like. A moto slam, but he was six inches off the ground. And, oh, no. and to me, that is, he is my, to the biggest celebrity that I could get on the Jason L show, no offense, is Tom Segura because he's the worst athlete in the world. And I want to touch him. I want to say I touched him. He's magnificent. Hey, I, uh, I can fly around the arena for two hours and... If I get down onto the ground, like in December, I was running outside to see the fucking Christmas star. Yeah. And I fractured my ankle. Oh. Wait, you fractured it? Oh, that's right. Didn't you? You got hurt. You got COVID. You got hurt more than once, though. You got hurt. Didn't you get hurt like three times in a weekend or something? I got stitches. Then I got staph infection. And then I fractured my ankle. That's right. That's what it was. <laughs> Man, anybody who could laugh telling that story. <laughs> Staff is a bummer, huh? Dude, it's so gross. Yeah, it's no. It's so bad. I felt so... I was worse than COVID. How was that for you? So you didn't get that bad? Because some people have stories where they're still suffering. They can't smell or taste. Did you have any 
Other no, stuff? My, my asthma is back in full force. My lungs have never been the same since. Oh, I, was, oh. I, mean, I, I was born with asthma. And as a kid, I was really, 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 really sick. That's why I got into gymnastics and swimming was to help my lungs. Oh, wow. But, and singing, obviously, you use your diaphragm. So singing helped me with asthma. But I haven't, I used to take those nebulizers, like the breathing treatments where, where the steam comes off it and it's all this medicine. I used to take that once a day. Um, but I hadn't done it in 30 years. So when I got COVID, I was back on the nebulizer and still, I mean, I wake up at two o'clock in the morning having a full blown asthma attack. It sucks. It's so COVID triggered some shit for yeah, sure. And I also have been super foggy from it. You get like foggy brain. This has been, it's not from the ecstasy or the weed that I, it's just, it's <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> wait, no, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> You're not on ecstasy <laughs> and weed right now. I what the hell? Wait, you're, you're it was it was it seven months ago? March. I had it early on, middle of March. And you still oh, feel stuff from it. Yeah. But Fuck. nothing like I hear from other people. I'm fine. I'm good. I just can't run down the stairs. But vocally <laughs> vocally any effect you've noticed from that? No, I'm still amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I back that so hard. <laughs> no, no, thank God. No, that would be soul crushing. Yeah, imagine. No, if... I, I can still sing. I just can't breathe. Right. Well, that's not as necessary. So you're all right. <laughs> I think it's actually that because I've sang all my life, that with the asthma that I have, that's why I got through COVID so well. Do you bother to get a vaccine now that you've had it, or how do you go oh, with I'm that? Getting, I would get all the fucking vaccines. I want all of them. I just judging by that stare at me. I am f also would get them, so don't fucking come at me. All right, I'm totally on your side. Like all the things that you post, I go, yeah. I just don't have. I don't say I don't have the balls to fight everybody with my. I'm like I'll see you go stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like everybody needs to recognize that. But I don't know if I want to retweet it. <laughs> just because I have in the I've said stuff in the past and I didn't know that I was making everybody so angry I was like yeah man like equal rights hey man what the fuck I'm like what not yeah. not equal rights uh. <laughs> <laughs> man I'm hanging out in the wrong crowd on so maybe maybe worry about the people that follow me on social media because I didn't know that anybody well, I, have, could... I have a ton of those but no what, what are you gonna do well I I wonder because of the effects of that and you I know that Carrie does the same thing. I, I can tell more Carrie Carrie does it for sport. I know. You can tell he's poking. He enjoys it. Like you can tell when he's in the on the toilet from his <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he goes hard. But do you find that to be I mean I can already tell you don't find that to be stressful at all? I it can be stressful, absolutely. And I'm I mean what I say so much. I know. So yeah, I get I get caught up in it sometimes, and people are really mean, especially when they bring your kids into it, which well, has nothing to do with anything. But if you want to be mean these days, and you're on social media, like what is the worst thing you could possibly say? That's what is said. Yeah, yeah that's. I, I was like, I, I forget what I said. Oh, I I know what I did. I went on Twitter and just put a period, just a dot, just to see what people would say. Yeah, and I'd say like half the people were like. Fuck you, you illiterate cunt! And, oh. oh my god! Fuck you die slowly. Fuck that, your children. Yeah, yeah, and that was me. I was super offended by that. Twenty-five percent of the people were like, "Did you mean to do that?" And then the other twenty-five percent were just like, "Oh, girl, me too." <laughs> <laughs> Relating to the to the dot. Oh man. Well, I I good times. What's that? I said good times. It is. I, 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 to me, it wears me out. So I try to stay away. Yeah. But I also feel like you're way more informed than I am. So that makes more sense that you can. Well, it's just so funny to me that people want you to just like, oh, you're a celebrity. You're a singer. So you don't get to say shit about anything. It's like, yeah. wait, you do nails. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. We all pay taxes, right? My whole family is military. I grew up fucking marching on Washington and doing Thanksgiving dinners for the homeless. My dad started the Bucks County Chapter 210 of Vietnam Veterans. Like, my brother served in Afghanistan for a year. 
you're fucking telling me I'm, I'm super engaged, super intelligent. I'm super passionate about what's right. I pay a shit ton of taxes. You're telling me I don't get to have a fucking opinion. Fuck you. Even if you weren't you right now, I would agree to that off the side, but I probably wouldn't retweet it. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I'm going to start looking for your retweets. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> don't psychologically fuck with me, all right? You know what, I won't. I'll just be like, what do you think, Jason Ellis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The well, worst right? day then, ever. It's right, so perplexing. Right? I'm going to be like, yes, a pig is talking to me on Twitter. Oh, eh. Uh, I just want to say, hey, Murdo, hey, <laughs> I like it when you do the swingy thing. Fuck it, guns. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, guns, over to you, your thoughts. <laughs> Help. That's my thoughts. Get me out of here. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go. Thanks so much for being on the show. And thanks I so much. You. I love you. And I, I want to. Tell you like oh I I never realized it until when I was writing that song and thinking about you're actually going to be on the show every time or without fail you've always um, been so helpful to me and I and I don't and I know that it's you know I'm also a person that doesn't trust anybody and you and Carrie have always been family to me and you've always looked out for me yeah. and I really appreciate it I wish I could return the favor in any way. You do. You're amazing. I love listening to you. I love who you are. I love how open and authentic you live your life. And you're incredibly talented. You're good at everything you try to do. And you're my friend. So. A bit fat right now, but oh, good. whatever. Well, aren't we all? <laughs> Yay! Eat and be merry. <laughs> is your wine available yet? Or is that still a uh, work in progress? Um, it sells out really fast. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking, I'm going. All right. Good, good talking to you. You don't really want to say what it is. What is it really? Can you say the name? It's Two Wolves Wine. Such a good name. And uh, we have a 25 acre organic vineyard. And if you go on the website, it's a really cool website. And it's uh, we do three releases a year. Oh, okay. Awesome. Well, yeah. Fun. We'd be. I can't drink anymore. You know, I blew it. Yeah. But <laughs> blew it. all the best to everybody else. Yeah, like I can't. It's a, I'm sorry. I'm not even going to go. Thanks so much for being on the show. Okay. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Bye. Oh, man. My microphone came off the whole time. So yeah. can you two talk while I unplug this and put it back on? Yeah, I can yeah. tell you've been gripping that for a while. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> and it, I, I like that it also prevented Jason from being able to put his shirt back on. Yeah. <laughs> So you just had to, you just had to sit there and do the the show half nude the whole time. Pig's kids are hopping in. And you're just <laughs> shirtless tattoo guy. <laughs> she successfully got off of Zoom very professionally as well because that's another everything she did was spot on. Another fun little element of the Zoom era of broadcasting and podcasting is that okay, well, nice to see you. Bye bye. The awkward goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> nobody can figure out how to close Zoom. Right, so you just say goodbye a third time, and all right, yeah. So, so we mm -hmm. should try and get our next guest. And in the meantime, yeah. I'll talk to you about some stuff. Yeah, if you would, I've got Jason some money that is absolutely burning a hole in my pocket. My only problem is, I just have no idea where to spend it. And I was thinking maybe we could try a new segment on the show where you just tell me about uh, businesses that I might personally be interested in uh, in supporting and buying stuff from. Right, and you're just, whatever they say, you're definitely going to invest. I wouldn't say that for sure. I'm a pretty discriminating consumer, so you're going to have to really blow me away. I work hard for my money, and I don't just spend it on anything. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Uh -huh. uh, in the meantime, on it, everybody, on it.com forward slash Alice. If anybody wants to get uh, a discount on all their supplements and kettlebells and clothing and battle ropes, everything you could ever think of to get fit and stay home, not go anywhere. And uh, I got a, a testament. I've done, I obviously do Alpha Brain and Shroom Tech all the time, but the other day when I ate, this is such a weird testament, but I did eat three ice cream sandwiches before I went to bed the other day and I woke up at 2.30 and I had boxing and I thought to myself at three in the morning, probably you should text coach and tell him today's not the day because... That's I'm going to be pretty uh, shaky for the whole day. And I was like, nah, 
if you go, then you'll maybe sweat out the thing that uh, made you that didn't get you some sleep. So I took Alpha Brain and Shroom Tech, and then when I finished working out at the gym, then I came home and I worked out for another two hours in my own gym. And I thought to myself, why do I have the beans to do that right now? And that's because it's that. So if you want a discount, it's a big help to the show. The more info they get from us shows good things. So remember, onit.com forward slash Ellis. Onit.com, you say? Yes. So I have to get the mobile over here as well? I do, right? I'm the only person that can pick it up. Oh, yeah. I think it is time for the mobile. Oh, look at that. Boy, you mentioned that we were going to have a massive celebrity guest this week <laughs> and the Pope. <laughs> and boy, that is true. You have delivered on both fronts. <laughs> We've had both Pink and His Holiness, the Pontiff, the man with God's telephone number. <laughs> that is right. Obviously, when it comes to uh, COVID-19, the Pope cannot be too careful, which is why he's back in his world-class million-dollar specially formulated spittle protector. This is true. And uh, you know, it also helps me from assassins. They could be anywhere. Yeah. They Especially, could be uh, right. d disguised as pink to come and kill me. Right. Over and Zoom. You can, never, you can never be too careful. We should try to get you some, uh, you know, you don't have to actually hear yourself, I think. You could probably take those headphones off. That is a good point. Yeah, because yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can still hear. What about Tully? Can you hear? Is Wait, you think <laughs> the headphones are hurting the Pope. Right. The Pope's not used to doing many things for himself. You got to bear Yo, this in mind. It's probably good got point. A, probably got a cardinal who wipes his ass too. Pope, uh, I think you're going to ask the question, but you we have you're in the news lately. Yeah, and we were just concerned. Our main reason for having you on the mm -hmm. show today was we care about you, obviously. That everybody cares <laughs> about you, and they're saying that you're packing on a few pounds. <laughs> yeah, we Dude. just wanted to know. Uh, what the problem was with that. Well, I don't uh, appreciate all of these people. Uh, you mean your doctors? Uh, them too, <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. I don't like all of these people uh, pointing out my bitch tits. Oh. That is not a uh, effect me in my poping duties. Yeah, the robe can only so, hide so much. Are I you saying that when I, you hear people say things about your bitch tits, that that makes you eat even more? <laughs> it uh, it sends me into a downward spiral. And oh, I say, right. hey, you get off of my back. Right. I feel like you realize the Pope is a human being, Michael. And I feel like people take it for granted that he is one because he's so holy. Right. But I, I do wonder, whoa. Yeah. I do. He's, he's a man. He walks. He breathes. And apparently he smokes big fat doobies. Wait, you smoke fat doobies, Pope? That is right. <laughs> it is it is not only of my teeth that are fat. It is also of my adobes. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Wow. wow. So uh yeah. the, the, the Pope is being advised to lose at least four pounds. You see, he has sciatica, his back pain, and in some recent meetings where he would typically be standing to address people, he's been forced to sit because of the back pain. And they say, Pope, you wouldn't have the sciatica flaring up on you. You weren't so fat. If you just were so fat. Now I'm starting to understand maybe what it is that's stimulating your overeating. It's like a yes. catch-22 because he's probably obviously smoking that because there's the CBD in there for inflammation for his back. Right. But then it brings on the munchies to make him eat and make him fat to hurt his back. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they, I, sometimes I like to <laughs> sit it down. Yeah, it's just uh, nice and relaxing. It, it take a load off, you know? Even the Pope likes to take a load off. This is true. Yes. Uh, you know, you, you, you burn a couple of these bad boys. Yeah, you need to sit down sometimes. How come sure. you haven't said to the people that you're all about marijuana? Because I believe the Pope has still not claimed... That he is a weed demon. I say it all of the time, and no, nobody is listening. Oh. That's right. Yes. All anybody will talk about is you liking chicks with fat asses on Instagram. Yes, so sue me. I guess you, you know. heard it first here, everybody. The Pope is down with the ganja. This right? is true. I challenge you. This is true. You, you find yes. me the part in the Bible where it says it, that I can't do this, huh? I dare you. Well, if anybody would know what's in the Bible, it would be the Pope, right? I That's mean, true. You've totally read it, right? Yeah. Oh, front to back. Sometimes I read it backwards just for fun. It's a bit hail Satan-y, isn't it? How dare you? I did not say that. All right. Well, so 
I feel like as long as we have the Pope here. It is great to have him here. And he's fully, hey, fully blunted. Choking on a Pope lung. We would be remiss to pass on this unique opportunity to ask for his pastoral guidance on some of the big questions. Oh, it's got me all emotional. Yeah, yeah. perfect. You know, Pope, I've just been uh, I've been wondering, man. You know, we're all out here. We're doing our best. We're trying the ups and down, the highs and lows. What are we doing here? What What is this all about, Pope? Oh, he brought some chips. Oh, what? Sh- Oh, man. Wait, are you getting into... What are those? Are those guacamole chili chips? These are a uh, game day a chili. A game game day. day chili. So the oh, Pope... That is delicious. So you just smoke weed and eat <laughs> chips all day? Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I feel like the Pope gets a bad rap because I kind of like this guy. Yeah, this guy kicks ass. Seems wow. Cool. Calm down, dude. Nobody's going to oh. steal your chips. Holy. I'm, I'm pretty good at the Mario Kart, too. Oh, right. oh you play yeah. video games while you're high and eating chips. Uh, that's true. I'll whip your ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. of course you are. It makes sense. Let us know if you need us to airlift a bottle of water in there if you get cotton mouth. Yeah. It is, it, oh, it is coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Pope gets sure. thirsty sometimes. Very thirsty. Right. I say. Cotton mouth is there. Yeah. yeah. A real motherfucker. No, it's a bitch. Is, can you drink holy water or is that evil? Yeah, it's no. very bad. You no. go straight to hell for that one. Oh, oh okay. wow. It is. What about if I poured some water in the holy bowl and then the water that I, the container that I used had a little bit of water in that and I drank that? Oh. It's not holy yet, right? You shouldn't do that. If you bless my water, can I drink it? You should not do that. It's blasphemy. You don't do that. So if you bless my water, where do I what do I do with it? Um, you know, you rub it on your face. Huh? Yeah. Go, oh, go bless you. yourself. You have maybe some ghosts and ghoulies in your house. You oh. you sprinkle it on the doorway. They cannot get past. Uh, Ancient right. Pope trick. Right. No longer thirst quenching, but now suitable for exorcisms. Very much so. The ghosts, uh, they don't like it. You see. Wow. Yeah. Super handy. So, uh, Pope, can I ask you a question? Yes, my child. If God is real <laughs> and 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 as awesome as you all say he is, why is Christian rock so bad and black metal so fucking awesome? You have to constantly face the temptations. Would you call life. me? <laughs> I feel like he called me something. No matter. Um, Are you getting a contact high? <laughs> Maybe. Man, it does smell a lot. I feel like your <laughs> tube's got a hole in it. I can only I'm... imagine what's going on inside there. <laughs> oh, inside trust the vortex. Me. Trust me, I am feeling it. <laughs> yeah, you're a one man hot box. <laughs> well, the Pope Mobile, nobody allowed in there but me. Yeah. Everybody else to get a, a two stoned. That's right. It's just it's just weed and <laughs> pa- 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 Pope farts. Wait, you're saying that the box, the whole thing was just made so you could get a stay high while you're waving to people? Yes, so just to keep that between you and me. Eh? Right, fair enough. Yes. Any more questions for the Pope, Michael? Yeah, Pope. Well, when you hold a, in a fart long enough that the feeling goes away, where did the fart go? It went straight to hell. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Wait, farts go to hell? If you don't there fart is, them. If you, uh, there is a secret portal to hell that lives inside every bungo hole. Oh. And if you don't uh, let a, a fart uh, escape, huh. it get trapped, and go straight to hell with all the demons. Wow. Bad guys. This guy really has read all the Bible. I know all the pages. <laughs> <laughs> Even the stuff that got deleted. I know all that stuff, too. Nice. Uh, another question, Pope, as long as we have you here. Well, hit me with it. Now, I know God can watch us and see us when we masturbate. Does he? <laughs> you know that, Michael. He's a, a gentleman. He always closes his eyes when he sees your hand go down your pants. He knows where that is going. So Wait, he, he, so what about if I wanted to like commit a sin? Could I just put my hands down my pants while I'm doing it and he looks away? No, he he knows. There so is I can't, a Noah I can't shoot a rabbit and jerk off at the same time? <laughs> I know what goes through that rabbit to mind. And I catch uh, you. Or, I mean, God catch you. But, you oh. know, does, does that not... <laughs> you, does you that, and God and Santa Claus, the holy <laughs> triumvirate. And fucking bunny bugs and all the other fuck faces. Yes. But don't... <clears throat> wait, I, if he sees... So if I'm jerking off and then I shoot a bunny, doesn't he see me jerking off now because I was shooting the bunny? No. He's very good at the blocking of that part out. Oh, and, yeah? Uh, yeah he, he also will get very angry 
And then what about, you try to trick him. What about if I kill a rabbit with my penis by jerking off on it? That is uh, not the way to kill a, a rabbit. I know, but he would have uh, to see me jerking off then, right? He he can block that out and still know what you are doing. What about if I docked his head and suffocated him in my foreskin? You understand. God has been doing this for a long time. Not a big he deal knows, to him. He knows all your tricks. You've talked to God about this specific rabbit asphyxiation dick docking loophole? In my early days at the Pope, I did. Yeah, nice. We have this exact the same conversation. I'm wow. glad to know you have all the answers, Pope. It does. It that does is why me- I won. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I win the Pope. Oh, wait, yes. you win it? Yeah. Well, that is also why there is no problem with me smoking a weed. You see what how they choose the Pope? No. It is by smoke. Yeah, Who yeah. smokes the most? True. Yes, and then it all flies out the chimney. You know, Be Real would be a sick Pope. Agreed. I would really like Dr. Green Thumb as the Pope. Well, he's going to have to get in line. It's I'm the Pope. Right. Hey, Pope, butterflies. You know, they're just like always flying around. They're like not really going anywhere. Do they ever stop? Do butterflies have a house? No, they don't. They have a very short life. And oh. they know this. <laughs> so, and they also know that there is no such thing <laughs> as a butterfly keep... heaven. What? So, <laughs> they make the most of their time. Yeah. No time for stoppy or going home. They just flutter around and sniff flowers. Mm. And, then, and then they die and go nowhere. Into oblivion. This is the word, yes. When, when, a, when a male spider meets a female spider... Does he love her, or is he just there to come in her? There is love amongst all of the species. A spider can love a spider. Yeah, it usually only for about a forty-five seconds at a time. Hell yeah! Ha ha! <laughs> that is a Pope joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that. Pope jokes on the Jason Ellis show. Yeah. You just bless yourself. I bless everything. Right. Yeah. Peace right. be with us. Yeah. Hey Pope, do women who have wider hips or just like taller in general? Do they have bigger vaginas? Wow, that is a I can't wait for the answer to that. <laughs> I have always wanted to know to know what is the deal with wide hip women in their giant <laughs> boxes. What the fuck? Well, if uh, you had the bother to read your Bible, oh. you would know that is in there. Wow. Oh. Yes. The eleventh wait. commandment. Wait. What how does it, can you cite what it, it says in there? I mean you probably it's, know it. Uh, the Book of Booty, it's towards the back. And you're saying that, so I didn't get the answer. You're saying that if you uh, if girls have wide hips, do they usually have a big vagina? Yes. If you, uh-huh. have, if you have bigger things, usually everything is big. Oh. Yes. Okay. You might, what about the, uh, I'm going to get gross. I don't want to. You better watch yourself, yeah. buddy. Yeah, yeah. Good, good point. Go ahead, Tully. Ask the Pope another question. Uh, this is my final question. This is all I really have been wondering about. Um, Pope, if I lost my balls in an accident... You are referring to testicles? Yes, my testicles. Okay. And then had somebody else's testicles surgically implanted into my grundle, if I had children, would they be mine or the testicle donors? <gasps> Sick-ass question. They would be your children because uh, all of the little spermies, the truth is, they originate in the soul. Oh. And you oh. still have your soul that also, by the way, leaves it in the grundle. Oh, wow. It's for yes. some. That's why people can't find it. They usually don't check there. Eh, no, nobody expects the grundle. No. I'm not sure balls are in the grundle. As in the grundle past the balls? That's general, that general region. I'd say the balls are where the grundle ends. Would it be the first couple of loads might be his? Mm -hmm. Would it work like that? Because his balls made... I don't think... It doesn't work like that, right? Because it's your blood that goes into the balls and then shoots the load out. Yeah. So it's your blood that's in the load. (sighs) Whatever's in his balls when they got taken off of him is not going to survive alive. Right. And intact to the recipient. Right. So I don't... Because I got a dead person... Unless they medivac these balls to me. I've got somebody else's ligament in my knee. Right. I don't... Still your kids. Right. If I come in somebody right now, that's still my kid, right? This is true, yes. Right. Good, because... Well, it'd be a good argument, though. If 
I'm like, it's not mine. And they say, why? I'm like, because it's, I'm not me. I'm, they didn't tell me who it was though. I hope he was an athlete. Actually, I don't. No, you don't. I hope that he didn't do anything and that his knee finally gets to see some action. Yeah, I think you want somebody who took like aerobics classes. Not had nothing, a mellow life barely. that didn't push it. Right. Right. Well, right. don't you wish that it's somebody that's young, unfortunately? Yes, and I imagine it probably is. That's very sad. So I probably got somebody that had like a bike crash or something. Yeah. Or a car crash or something. That's shit. what the whole organ donor thing is about. You yeah. know? Okay. I gotta do I think I did that on my thing. Yeah, yeah, I think I did that. Oh yeah. So Pope, if we donate our organs when we get to heaven, if we get to heaven, will we be like missing kidneys and hearts and stuff? No, you will get them all back in ghost form. Oh, as man. long as you don't um, donate your grundle, oh, nice. you will be complete when you go to heaven. Right. That makes sense because I do feel it like does. in the spirit world, you're definitely going to be a tad see through. Everybody is a little bit see through. Kind of makes yes. sense. Cause you ever seen Casper? Yes. That is what everybody looked like. Casper's not really see through, isn't he? Just like a sheep? <laughs> like Tilda Swinton? Nice. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I didn't catch that one. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like look like you, but with no facial hair, like Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Pretty much, but the lower section is all wispy. Oh, do you think it'd be crazy for Ellen DeGeneres to cut her ears off? Uh, by by, yeah, by by most standards, yeah. Do you think? I mean, do you think? She I think could... I've seen photos of her with sunglasses on. She does seem like a fan of shielding her eyes from the sun occasionally. Did you know that? Um, who's the basketball player? John Sally. John Sally he's has no show. ears. Yeah, and he can't wear sunglasses because he's got no ears to set his sunglasses on. Where's your god now, Pope? Yeah, what are you gonna say about that? He is in heaven, and he's playing with that man's ears. He's like forty-three years old and living in fucking Santa Barbara. Wait, God? No, John Sally. Oh. Well, he has a nose, right? <laughs> that can hold him up. You ever see The Matrix? <laughs> Morpheus, he got that little nose thing. Well, good point, good point. Morpheus is almost earless as well. Yeah, maybe that's why they had to give him those glasses. Uh, mm. Holds onto his head instead of his ears. Yeah. I feel like that would hurt after a while. Got to pinch the nose. No one's doing sunglasses from the chin to the head. True. True. Why is that? Yeah, because you could do cross sunglasses if you did that. And then, you could, then you could be like seriously praising the Lord and protecting your eyes from the sun. Get a really casual Bane kind of thing going on. Yeah. Like if you just went <laughs> straight down here like that and then the, the, you know what I mean? And then you just, hell yeah. Well, not hell yeah, but you know, yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Pope, I think we've wasted enough of your time. Oh, ah, uh, I could talk to the Pope for hours, <laughs> but I guess the podcast game, you're not supposed to talk for hours. Does that mean we're leaving, Michael? No, we don't have to leave. Uh, do, I, before wanna... I leave, I do have to mention Cool Ven Please. and Lean Feast. Please. Cool Ven is the uh, cold, insulated, soft-sided meal bag with detachable heating chamber, perfect for on-the-road hiking sports, uh, in the car, all-around portable bag. Yeah, but so coolven.com. If you use code Ellis, you get yourself a sweet-ass discount. And why not get to Lean Feast as well? These things, I'm really happy that, because on it, Cool Vin and Lean Feast, if you got them all and you got my discount, you got a discount and there's no way you cannot be uh, in better shape. You just wouldn't do it. If you got to drive, then you can have this food in the, in the, in the Cool Vin. And I tag them all the time so you can see it on my Instagram if you want to figure it out that way. And then Lean Feast is they're gonna you know they they provide meals all prepared for you and they're not challenging they're not crazy meals like i would do some stupid thing where it's painful and every meal you know that you're on a diet because it's not real food these guys have pizza man these guys have burgers veggie burgers and buffalo bur like all kinds of stuff donuts and it's there regular and you can eat it and you can get yourself in shape if you go to leanfeast.com or follow them on Instagram at lean, yeah, 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 dash feast. It's once again, I post it everywhere on my social media. So thanks to Lean Feast and Cool Ven and Eric and all the boys for supporting the show. Pope, are you done? Oh, you're done. You left. You can't get the tube off you, can you? We've been able to we hear this thing we throughout did. the show while we're talking to Pink. You could just hear tiny little pieces of tape giving ever so slightly. And look at that. I kept on expecting the dam to burst. There's no way that thing's going to burst, dude. Sure, it's coming apart, but yeah. the amount of tape and the tape that I use, it's yeah. like gorilla tape. Ah. So I just I just hope that uh, – I feel like there's another way to do that. 
but it, it seems like it worked. I would really 100%. like to put a lid on it. So if he smoked again, it just he disappears in the smoke. That would be very funny. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. High yeah. Pope was just always in the cloud. That'd be very funny, and we'd get less of the weed in our faces. True, true, true. At least it was CBD. It was spoiler, man. Good one, Michael. I'm joking. Among high grade, high level THC, man, my <laughs> contact high is fucking insane right now, guys. You're gonna have to get me an Uber. Uh, life is cheap and times are tough perpetually over in Eastern Europe. A listener by the name of Sean sent us a news story out of Slovak, Slovakia, out Wait. of Bratislava, Slovakia. If you're Slovakia, you're not Czechoslovakia anymore. You're They're split. Yeah. There's Czech oh, Republic so the- and there's Slovakia. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Yeah, somebody wanted put them together and they didn't want to be together. And yeah. So there's Czech and Slovakia. I love Czech Republic. It's great, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Told you I bought a t-shirt there from a street vendor. The local language is Magyar and the slang word over there for like come or jizz, however they pronounce it, is Mike. M-I-K-E. So I got a t-shirt that had a Nike logo made into a sperm with my name on it. Sweet. Yeah. And the woman made a joke about how sometimes she gets them stuck in her teeth and she sold it to me. Oh, Ew, but kind of cool. <laughs> I know. I Must know. be interesting to order Starbucks there too. Why? Because they're just like, when his lattes and they're like, jizz, jizz. True, true, yeah. So this lady who might well be the exact same woman who told me that joke when she sold me that t-shirt, she <laughs> entered a gas station in Bratislava, Slovakia, and upon entering noticed a robbery in progress. And she could have run away. She could have called the authorities. She could have tried to beat the guy up. She did none of those things. No citizens arrest. She, it is reported, blew the guy. <laughs> <laughs> that made that story cool. Yeah. The whole thing was kind of lame, and then she blew the guy. Awesome. Yeah. That's actually number three on my ways to get out of a robbery. To like blow I'm, a guy? I'm trying a couple of things first, but if all else fails, it's like, all right, dude, fucking let me go. How many people want to get their dick sucked by somebody that robbed their house? Even a gay guy. I mean, yeah, show me the gayest house robber in the world. Right? It's not going to happen. Yeah, like I feel like if I catch you robbing my house and he's like, look, man, if you let me go, I'll suck your dick. I'm like, that, no, that didn't, that's not going to help me. Yeah. Like, I don't even care if it ends up being like Tom Selleck's house. And he's like, seriously. If Tom Selleck robbed my house and I called Tom Selleck and he said, look, I'll suck your dick to get out of it. That's a different that's story. That's a different story. Yeah, I would totally fucking be like, get that mustache on here, son. Work right, it. No, seriously. Hold on. Let me get the, the Magnum Isn't that song great? up on Spotify. Isn't that and let's great to know that Tom Selleck could pretty much rob anybody's house in America and just say, look, I'll suck your dick. And they'll, who would report him to the police? <laughs> am, I, am I the only guy Believe here? Believe it or not, that guy might be out there. A guy that would find that to be inappropriate. A guy might find that doubly offensive. First, he tried to rub my, rub my house, and then he tried to blow me. There are still people so close-minded and pig-headed in America, Jason, that that might be what they would tell him. How to dare that? It blows my mind. What's, What's wrong with like, you? What's sound like, like 78 years old now? Yeah, but he still looks great. Yeah, he, he does, yeah. That, he hides behind the moustache. Yeah. Still has. This was a long time. This was probably 10 years ago. But 10 years ago, he was behind me in Beverly Hills in a convertible Jaguar with a cigarette, with a cigar in one hand and uh, milk duds. And he poured the milk duds into his mouth at the light and then smoked the cigar. And I was like, fuck yeah, man. Living the dream. What a champion. He just seems like one of those guys who's never not been living the dream. Like I see him as the guy who was like constantly getting laid in high school and then was like, I don't know, maybe I'll just go to Hollywood and be famous now. And they're like, oh, Tom, glad you made it. Here's your television show. And he's like, go up past the milk duds. And I don't even hate him for it. You know what's crazy is now if if Tom Selleck tried to make it as a young Tom Selleck, he would be laughed off the camera. Like there was a time for him to rip. Yeah. Just the the cop show. Yeah. That just sucked. It did. But everybody loved it. Uh-huh. And quickly And then he's in under. those weird Hallmark movies where he's a fucking cowboy, where he gets the Twirly's moustache even more. Yep. The Those Japanese are... baseball guy. Not good. Oh, that's right, man. That was <laughs> awesome. I, I love that movie, man. So, so like had a time. That's when sure you're did. in the because now when you watch 80s movies, you go, oh man, why did I watch that? It's so bad. Young Guns. Young Guns one and two, I thought was so good. Yep. And now I can't even get through it because of the the music and air. I'm like, ah, oh, fucking so bad. Yeah. What was I thinking? Yeah, Emilio Estefez doesn't look like he's ever spent a night in its in a tent. All the way up to Marty Ducks, I had him 100% of, as one of the greatest actors of our time. <laughs> That's how bamboozled I was as a boy. 
My, but Marty Ducks, I was like, Marty Ducks? Why would you do? But you're one of the greatest actors of our, who does Marty Ducks when they're the greatest? Ah, oh, shit, oh, he's terrible. Oh, you've been off Repo Man, there you go. I liked Repo Man. That's this, a good one. This nice and weird. Slovakian lady. So the the she starts blowing the guy. She's like, wow, I'm really impressed by how you're robbing the store. I can't say no to that. So he's like, okay, I guess I could take a break from robbing everybody for you to blow me. And so the store employees sneak away and they call the authorities. And it is reported that uh, by the time the cops got there, she and the guy are back in the little employee backroom area, half naked on the floor. And the woman is quoted as saying, I don't take him anymore. Oh, I don't take, take him anymore. That's gangster. Like, yeah, like, no, I don't put his penis in my mouth. You are here. You take him away. Yeah. It's basically like, I am done with him. You take him now. Sounds a little popey. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been the Pope. Yeah. Or a prostitute. <laughs> Hard to say, tell. Did say she was about four pounds overweight with some back <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. Seems so much tougher there. So much. Also, um, you know, I never try to stick up for the bad guy in these situations, but um, that's a stupid move if you're the robber to take a blowjob break from somebody you're slighting. Especially, like, your life is really in somebody's hands when they're sucking your penis. She could have bitten his dick off. Yeah, I keep... Katie said that, that she thinks she could bite somebody's penis off. I'm, I'm, I'm like, if it's hard, could you really? Last Enough to what? where it would be that very unpleasant for the... The penis owner. You can make yeah. it bad, but could you get it off? Because that's the at least the original version of Last House on the Left is a horror movie that scarred me from childhood. Where that's like the that's like the the gotcha scene from it is I think like um some kids show up and try to like rob a house and they end up killing somebody in the house and it's like this lady's kid or something like that. So later on in the movie, she finds the robbers and she seduces one of them and then she bites his dick off. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess it can be done. And ever since then, I've been like, could you? I don't, just seems like all the business in there would make it really hard to get off. It's probably just us not thinking about uh, trying to bite somebody's flesh off. You probably don't know what that's like because you've probably never done it. Raw meat's really tough. Like cooking stuff really tenderizes it quite But you can bite it off. Like, I bit a shark's heart. I ate a shark's heart. Oh, yeah. And I just bit a piece off. Okay. Well, you have more applicable knowledge in this situation than I would. It came off like a meat apple. I also feel like if, Man, you're, if you can't even bite a penis clean off, it's still going to ruin somebody's day. Oh, I'm not debating that. Yeah. I just feel like you could get them off, too, because they're in a really bad position for you to sort of... I mean, can, they, can you take a shot from oh, there? Oh, you know what the move is. Is to because like you know when you're about to bite, right? Yeah. So right as you go to chomp down really hard, you also just fucking two hand grab the sack yeah. and yank yeah. as you bite. Then there's no way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That guy's fucked. Have you ever seen street fights where somebody does that and then the person just starts screaming and immediately says, I'll give up, please let go? No, but I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. YouTube showed me that a few, more than one time where a guy is fighting and he's getting the upper hand and the other guy just gets a hold of the nuts and starts yeah. ripping him and the guy's just screaming, stop, 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 please stop, after not having that opinion. So it does tell me that if they're grabbed a certain way, all bets are off. Right, I'll keep that in mind if I ever travel to Slovakia. That was legal at one point in the UFC, right? Eating your dick. Oh, well... <laughs> Um, like <laughs> genital shots. Yeah, no, a guy in a UFC one or two headbutted a man in the dick. Wow. Yeah. Do you know how many UFCs it took before they were like, maybe we should leave the genitals out? Um, I don't know. I think maybe, yeah, I know, right? When did it get, I think maybe after the first two, the people that didn't, th that found out that that kind of shit doesn't play in real fighting, mm -hmm. that was kind of the, the, the thing that sorted those guys out. Yeah. Because I think there was a lot of guys that had black belts in some bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And well, not, <laughs> it's not that, but as bad as that, because there's certain karate guys that, you know, you've got all these things. And when somebody's really fighting, fucking moving around like this is a terrible idea. Yeah. Like go back to <laughs> just putting your fucking hands up. Right. But I, in the first couple of ones, there's guys that are, do, they're, you know, doing this shit with their hands. You know what I mean? Like, because they're going to do like a slappy block or something. Yeah, they look dudes, like somebody from Tekken. Yeah, and those dudes would get put up against a cage and and fucked up. And they lost worse, I felt. Like, there was real injuries back then because nobody knew that you could definitely have a mismatch. Yeah. 
and, and then and no people, weight class too. And people didn't know how to like like you've said many times, skateboarding. Being good at skateboarding involves also getting good at falling. Guys, yes. guys who have poor defensive technique don't know how to handle themselves when the shit goes really wrong to to mitigate that a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, good point. I feel like in the eighties and nineties, where was there was there uh, any karate guys or any taekwondo guys in America that were really throwing uh, regularly throwing hard punches at each other's heads? Right. I don't. I think it's more of a board breaking, learning how to do kicks, spinning things, and. You know, ha ha with you. Yeah. But I don't think well, I did karate when I was a kid. When you did sparring, it was like points. Nobody yeah. and you weren't supposed to try and hit him in the head. Nobody was finishing anybody. Yeah. And in right. and in Muay Thai and real boxing mm -hmm. and that's the, that wrestling that you don't wrestling's so much better for MMA that you cannot know how to punch and still win in the UFC. Like uh Goldman and, and Randy Couture and all those guys, they just took people down. Yeah. Didn't Big John McCarthy say when he was on our old show that he was like a ref at the first UFC and yeah. was, he was immediately involved in the guys we need some rules here kind yeah. of thing. So it started pretty quickly. I think the real answer to it is you have it starts as it does start as a little bit of a freak show. It does start as a little bit of a sideshow. It does start as a little bit of human cockfighting. And then you go, well, actually, there are people who are very good at multiple disciplines that this could be a real sport. And those guys go, if you want me to keep showing up. You got to get the biting each other's balls. <laughs> yeah, that's probably when it goes from being a little bit of a freak show, a little bit of anything goes. We just demand blood to a sport, and it also seems less like you said the cockfighting thing when people are both at the same level. Sure, because I feel like when you've been in the game, no matter what it is, your genre of of uh, mixed martial arts, if you've been in for ten years, you just take shots better. Yep, even if it's you know your jujitsu guy, whatever it is, when you're in trouble. You've been in this game. You've been in trouble in some kind of way in combat and you're not flailing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think like the tank abbots were like the last of the. Yeah. I could beat the shit out of pretty much anybody at the pub. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's pretty cool. But what about if it went for more than two minutes and somebody grabbed your ankles? Right. Because tank was like, shit, I don't know about that one. Exactly. Stop and touching thus, my ankles. <laughs> and thus, <laughs> a sport was born. Uh, I think that's our show. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Thanks to our guests, the Pope and Pink. Very yeah. excited about that. And a uh, reminder to everybody that if you like the show, we're doing two more full shows every single week at patreon.com slash ellismate. Yeah, it's fucking sweet. Yeah, there you go. So Call you my bluff. You still get the book, jasonellisbook.com, Wolf Knives, all that stuff. Thanks to everybody that listens. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. You know the deal. See you next week. Don't die. Blimp, blimp, blimp. Big 
Point, 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 point